praise that we can. Amen? Amen. Who fights for 
the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord who can stop the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord Almighty Lion, the Lion of Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. We just serve an amazing God. Don't we just serve an amazing God just to bring us all together today? Oh, hallelujah. His name is so powerful. We could just cry out to the heavens and just say, God, and whenever we need, we 
we know is in motion. It's going to start happening. It's going to start working. Just when we say the word God, we can just close our eyes and just think and just pray to God. And we know that our problems are not in our hands. It's in a powerful being that has no words that can compare to him. Nothing can compare to the word God. Nothing in this world can compare. Everything in the world, all the riches, all the glory, all the mighty, all the power, doesn't even get to a fraction of what God is. I'm a mathematical man, and I love to crunch the numbers, but no number in the world is as powerful as that three letter, just G-O-D. Our powerful God is almighty. Nothing compares to him. Nothing compares to his love, his power, and his goodness. Nothing compares to him. your voices. All my life you have been faithful. 
God for anything, all of us, can, can we say, God, I just want to thank you for this. Can we do that? Just, just right where you're at. Can you just, I want you to thank, thank him, that, thank him for your health. Thank him that you woke up today. Thank him that he has provided that job for you, provided that he put your family together. Thank him for all, get creative. Just thank him. Will you do that? Give God 10 seconds. Will you do that? God, we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. We want to thank you, boy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you know what that is? That, that's, that's a backdrop. That's a foundation for us to go to the Lord now in prayer and to say, okay, God, I'm reminded that you've been good, so I have no problem being encouraged that you can be good again, that you can answer my prayers again. Because the same, God, the same God that did what he did for you before is the same Lord that is ready to enter into your situation into your life again and we're gonna we're gonna have that kind of faith as we pray here today so there there are many that are facing different circumstances and different situations in here there are some that are joining us online that that are facing some uh some are facing loss some are facing health issues some are facing uh job situations i mean the list goes on and on but we will not catch God by surprise with anything we have to say today. Amen? Amen. And so we can go to him with a confidence that as, uh, as we looked at a couple weeks ago, we will find grace in our time of need. So that's what we're asking for today, that God will do that. So if, if you need God to answer a prayer, would you, just, would you just express that prayer to God just right where you're at? And I'm going to pray over all of us, and we're going to believe that God will do miracles that he'll do great things. Would you just begin praying now before I even lead us? Why don't you just start praying, God, I need this. God, I need you to do this. And you will not intimidate God by what you're asking for. I promise you. I promise you. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we, we are coming to you by faith, believing that you can do what man can't. So Lord, I pray that you would take every situation. God, that you would take every need. God, every health issue, every person who is facing pain of some kind, every family that needs your touch. God, every job situation that needs your touch. God, we just lift all those up to you. We bring them all to you, Lord God. We cast our cares upon you. We don't hang on to these cares. We, we, we cast them to you, knowing that you care for us. So, Lord, I pray that you would take our cares and our burdens and our anxieties, Lord God, and, Lord, that you would uh, heal and touch and provide. In the name of Jesus, God, that you would restore what the enemy has tried to break 
and destroy. Lord, you're greater than all of that. So, God, we ask you right now that your Holy Spirit would just touch every individual within the sound of my voice who is in need today. God, we pray for our loved ones that may, may be in nursing homes or hospitals today. And God, there might be some isolation going on there, but God, would you fill the room that they're in with your Holy Spirit's presence right now? And wrap your arms around them, Lord God, and touch them. And God, I ask you that you would do, do this and even more. So Lord, let your Holy Spirit touch. Let your Holy Spirit move. And God, we'll thank you for what you do. We'll give you praise, we'll give you glory, and we'll give you honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And the Lord's people said, amen. 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 Can we give God praise for what he's going to do? All right? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, if you haven't been seated, you can be seated now. And uh, thank you, worship team, for your hard work. We appreciate that. And uh, it's exciting to see all of you here today. Uh, getting a little ring up here with my big mouth of sound people, so maybe just turn me down a, a little bit. That'd be good. And um, that's actually great. Thank you. Um, welcome. We are two days from September. Can you believe this? Wow. Wow. Uh, Jonathan and I were talking uh, today, and it's like, you know, it seems like... Uh, this year has just dragged, but then it seems like it's just been a whirlwind. It, it, it's just crazy, crazy combination. But we're glad that you have chosen to uh, worship with us here this morning. And uh, I want to share just a few things with you. First of all, if you're a guest today, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. And if you're joining us online, uh, we're so glad that you have joined us as well. And uh, yes, let's give everybody a big round of applause. Now, we have a, uh, an online connect card. So if, uh, if, if your religion says that I will not fill out a physical connect card because it's in the book of Hezekiah somewhere that I should not do that, uh, be freed today. Uh, you can go to this website bcot.org slash hello. Thank you, Vanna. I appreciate that. And bcot.org slash hello. And uh, just give us your information as much as you want to give us. And uh, that's all it is. So you can help us along that way, and we'd appreciate that. And uh, that kind of lets us know who you are, and we just want to send you a quick note to say thanks for being here. And we mean that. Thank you so much for being here. Now that September is rolling around, it is time once again for the Bethel Church bowling league yes yes <laughs> and uh we're excited about this can you please and, remind uh, we, who won? we weren't sure <laughs> would you be quiet uh we weren't sure who won last season well anyway uh oh that's right anyway uh <laughs> uh it's gonna start on the 11th of september uh, at Spins Bowl. That is at the intersection of 224 91. If you would like to bowl in the bowling, I've had people say, Well, I'm not a good bowler. You will be among friends. Trust me on that one. We've got some pros and we got some people that aren't that great and we got some people that are just beginning. And what it is, we have so much fun. It really is just a lot of fun. We play every other Friday. And uh, the cost is thirteen fifty per night, and that covers all three of your games e uh, each night. And if you want more information, uh, you can speak with uh, Regina. There she is right there. Regina, kind of elegantly wave. That, that's, well, that's okay. And uh, kind of, you need to do like the whole pageant wave like that. Tammy showed me that. Yeah, see, your daughter knows. Your daughter's got it down. That's awesome. And... Uh, but uh, she can answer every question that you have about bowling, maybe life in general. So, uh, so go to her. And uh, there's also a sign-up sheet out in the lobby if you're interested. And uh, we encourage you to be a part of this. We'd love for you to be there, okay? Um, we also want to announce, uh, back in uh, uh, a few months ago, uh, our church lost somebody who was very, very, very dear to us, uh, Sherri Ann Wold. And today... 
She is in the presence of the one that she loved so much, Jesus, and she loved to worship God, and now she gets to do it for eternity. And uh, when we lost her, it was right in the midst of the beginning of this whole COVID thing, and it was hard to uh, schedule uh, a memorial service because of all kinds of weird logistics that we had to deal with. So finally, we were able to nail down a day uh, where her family can be a part of this, and that will be on Saturday, uh, September the 19th, here at the church at 11 o'clock. And we're just going to, um, we're going to honor her life is what we're going to do. Uh, we know to be, uh, if you know Jesus, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? And so we know that that is where she's at. But we're going to celebrate her life. And then uh, afterwards, we're going to have a, a just kind of a finger food reception, if you will. And, uh, and that'll be available to everybody afterwards. And uh, again, in this crazy time of pandemics, we're trying to do this as effectively as we can and as meaningfully as we can. And so, yeah, we're excited about this. So again, Saturday the 19th, uh, here at the church at 11 a.m., we invite all of you, if your schedule allows, we invite all of you to be a part of that. Um, also, uh, this past week, whoops, sorry about that, Tammy. Watch this video. <laughs> oh, hey, that's okay. No, no, no. Uh, we'll go back to it. We'll go back to it. That's my bad, actually. Um, uh, this past week, you all know that Hurricane Laura went through uh, the south, uh, kind of the Louisiana area, uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana especially, and uh, kind of took a right angle, and I think it kind of hit us a little bit. Did you notice? We actually got rain. How about that? So now the golf courses are only kind of brown, so it's kind of exciting. And um, for those of you who don't know, we support a ministry called the Convoy of Hope. And this, this ministry is one of the most, most near and dear to me that's out there. I have gone with the Convoy of Hope group to Haiti to see their work with empowering women who are single and uh, they're trying to raise a family in a culture that does not allow women to do much, and Convoy of Hope goes in, and they help these women start businesses and uh, raise their families. Uh, Convoy of Hope has an agricultural avenue where they will teach uh, people how to plant crops and raise food for their family. Convoy also has gotten its start, actually, with disaster relief. And whenever there's a disaster like a hurricane, like Hurricane Laura, um, Convoy of Hope is often there even before the Red Cross gets there. And they, th these people love Jesus, and they bless uh, the world as much as they can. And when disaster strikes, the convoy is there. And uh, Tammy, let's go ahead. It's about a one-minute video. Let's show them that video. This is kind of an update from Hurricane Laura with a Convoy of Hope. here in Lake Charles or anywhere else around the world. So thank you. So this is pretty awesome. You're, you're a part of this. because we, we support the Convoy of Hope every month through your giving. A lot of you love to give on top of what we support Convoy of Hope for, and you're making such a difference. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Some have asked, will we uh, send some funds towards the rebuilding efforts and the 
the relief efforts uh, from Hurricane Laura? And the answer is yes. And so if you'd like to designate an offering towards the Convoy of Hope, um, you can do that in two ways. One, uh, Jonathan's getting ready to sing in a little bit, and if you'd like to give, if you haven't worshiped the Lord with your giving yet, we have a uh, uh, kind of a giving box, if you will, right by the sound booth. You can drop any gifts that way for the Convoy of Hope. Also, you can go online to BCOT, that stands for Bethel Church of Talmadge, bcot.org slash give. And there is an option to give to the Convoy of Hope as well. And whatever we receive, we will send that and probably more uh, to Convoy of Hope. So if God's leading you to kind of help in this effort, uh, we encourage you to do so. Here's what I love about the Convoy of Hope. And this doesn't get said enough. Convoy of Hope just doesn't show up for a week and then leave. Uh, they stay. And so we, we still, remember when that hurricane went through Puerto Rico? We still have relief efforts and, and, and uh, restoration efforts in Puerto Rico. When I say we, the Convoy of Hope. So the Convoy of Hope just doesn't make some grand entrance and then show off their resources and their fancy trucks and then leave. They are committed to the long term. So you need to know that any kind of resource that's given towards the convoy, uh, it is well invested and it's a great resource. So I want you to be assured of that. So if you'd like to give in that way, you can certainly do that. Okay. All right. We're going to pray. And Jonathan is going to uh, minister in song as you minister to the Lord with your giving here today. And uh, I definitely want to pray for your finances. And I want to pray that God would uh, bless you as you bless him. Um, I'm so glad that God's economy does not depend on the United States of America's economy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isn't our economy crazy? I mean, it, it really is. You know, some... Some guy does something crazy in the middle of the Middle East and all of a sudden gas shoots up a quarter a gallon. You know, it just, so much of our economy is, is organized and is based on fear. And I'm thankful that God's economy doesn't operate that way. He owns it all. So if we're faithful to God, I'm convinced that he will be faithful to us. Amen? And so I'm going to pray for your financial situations, for your needs. We're going to pray that God would bless any offering. Some of you have sent in your offerings already. Some of you have already given online. We're going to pray that God blesses all of that and blesses your home as well, okay? Will you join me in prayer? Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to give. And now I pray, Lord, that you would bless the gift and the giver. Lord, I pray that you would take these offerings that we we're not given to a church. We're not given to any organization. Well, God, we're giving them to you. And God, I'm asking you to further these offerings and bless them in such a way that we could reach so many. God, we pray for those that have been victimized by this hurricane that went through. And God, we don't have all the answers why, but we know who does. And so we ask you that you would use this moment to uh, touch many, many people for your kingdom. And Lord, I'll thank you for what you do. Bless this offering. Now bless Jonathan as he sings. In your name, amen. God sent his son They call him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive Heal To buy my pardon An empty grave is there To prove my Savior lives Because he lives I 
I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know son appreciate that and uh it's cool we get to hear that at the house all the time this is really neat <laughs> oh praise god do you have your bibles today all right uh grab or click or whatever you do but go to second corinthians chapter 12 we are on the grace series we're actually um we're actually concluding the grace series today we have looked at what the Bible has to say about grace. And um, I, I hope you've gotten a lot out of this. J just as a review, we learned that grace is uh, a free gift. God's grace is not something that we earn. God's grace is not a reward. It is a gift that he offers to us. It's, it's nothing that we can work up and uh, try to earn on our own by our good deeds. We also saw that uh, Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that we can go to the throne of grace with a confidence and that we will then have grace given to us in our time of need. Last week, we talked about what happened when grace appears and how uh, th there is an inward change in all of us. And we're looking ahead to uh, the return of Jesus. Today, I want to take a look at a passage of scripture that is very interesting because it really looks at a moment when Paul, the Apostle Paul, 
this spiritual giant was at a rather low point in his life. And he kind of retraces these steps uh, for us. So we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The title of this message is this. It's all I need. It's all I need. God's grace is all I need. God's grace is all I need. Now, a lot of us, we, we love the idea of uh, needing a lot of other things in our lives. To be quite honest with you, though, what you really need is God's grace. Amen. And there is nothing on this earth that can be a substitute for the grace of God. And Paul here is talking about a moment in his life that was very difficult and how he was able to deal with that. I want to speak to some people today that you might be facing a critical or difficult season in your life, whatever that is, whatever that might look like. And I want you to know that what you don't need is really another sermon, although we appreciate you listening and, and not sleeping. You know who you are. And uh, we, we, we don't believe that you need another self-help course. Uh, what you need is God's grace amen. to get you through this. Now, it's easy to say amen when you're on the other side of it. But when you're in the thick of something difficult, oh, praise God, all I need is God's grace. Woo! And uh, that's, not always, that's not always the case. And Paul here was going through it. And, and take a look at this. If you're able to, could you stand with me in honor of God's word as we read this together? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 9. I'm reading out the New International Version. If you've got another version, keep up. Here we go. Verse 7 says this, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Verse 9 says this, but he said to me, but Jesus said to Paul, you ready? My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For, I, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. His grace is all, all I need. Let's pray. Lord, speak to us now through your word. And, and, and I'm praying that you would meet us right where we're at today and uh, have your way. Have your way in every heart and every life, God. And if any of us just need a touch of your grace today, may we know that it's there for us in abundance if we just trust and believe you for that. And we'll thank you in your name. And we all said amen. 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 You may be seated. So Paul here is going through a difficult time, and he is praying about it and going through quite a bit, and I wondered today if there might be some people that can relate a little bit to what Paul might be going through, uh, and I'll elaborate on this, but what I want you to, the, the takeaway here, okay, the takeaway today is the fact that we can learn a lot about the grace of God from this passage of scripture. A lot. And it applies to every single one of us here today. No matter where you are with the Lord, maybe you are brand new to the Lord, maybe you're not serving the Lord just yet. Uh, maybe you've been around the Lord for a long, long time. You helped Noah build the ark, okay? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, but w while we look at Paul's circumstances, boy, there's a lot that we can learn about the grace of God. And I'd like for us to take a look at these. So just three points today. Uh, 
but boy, they pack a punch. I'm just telling you right now, so be ready. Number one, I want to talk about Paul's reality. Paul's reality. Let me back up and just say, if you believe, or if you have been taught, or if you have heard a sermon that says, well, now that you know Jesus, you will never have a problem again. You will never have a difficulty. You will never have a trial. Never will you go through a crisis because now Jesus has come and everything is flowers and pudding. Everything is just perfect now. And if there is a problem in your life, obviously you are the one that's at fault. That is terrible preaching. That's terrible teaching. So get that out of your system right now. And, and here we are looking at the, at the example of the greatest missionary of all time, Paul. The one who, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was used to uh, write most of the New Testament, Paul. This Paul, okay? And look what he says in verses 7 and 8. He says this, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, that's another sermon, by the way, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Then look at verse 8. He says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Wow. Wow. Now, we don't know exactly what Paul's thorn was, this thorn in the flesh. There's been speculation some people think that it was his poor eyesight. And we see this in other passages of Scripture where uh, Paul may have had, a, had difficulty with his eyesight after his experience on the road to Damascus. He may have been partially blinded. Others will say that, that uh, Paul may have suffered from epilepsy and, and, and this just tormented him. Some believe it might have been his mother-in-law. I don't know. <laughs> or his youth pastor. Uh, uh, but, but <laughs> so, so, so we, don't, we don't know what the thorn is, okay? So, so you know, if you're going to write your thesis on Paul's thorn, okay, good luck, but we just don't know what it was. Here's what we do know. What we do know is that whatever this was, it tormented him over and over and over again. For fun... I looked up the Greek word. The New Testament was originally written in Greek, okay? So I looked up the Greek word for torment, and the, 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 the word picture is literally being struck with a fist over and over and over again. And Paul is saying that this thorn is just beating me up over and over and over and over again. Can any of you relate to that? Have you been there? Maybe you're there now. And, and let's not forget, by the way, Paul, who, as we read the scriptures, he taught and converted thousands of people, planted churches all over the world, cast out devils, prayed for people, and they were healed. Prayed for people, and God moved miraculously and this scripture tells us that three times Paul prayed about this and didn't get the answer he was looking for. I'm talking to people today who have gone through some stuff or you're currently going through some stuff and you've even prayed about this stuff and it's still there. How do you deal with that? Well, I guess God doesn't love me. That's the wrong answer. I must have done something sinful. That's cruddy teaching. So, so get away from that. Well, God's getting me because of what I did as an eighth grader 30 years ago, right? And, and now it's caught up with me. I took Sally's gum, and now the Lord... The Lord has decided this, this is payback for poor Sally. And, and that's not how God 
does his thing. Now, on the flip side, sometimes there is consequences to our sin, right? Right? Okay, if I rob a bank, I can't believe God put me in jail. God didn't put you in jail. You robbed a bank. <laughs> Stupid. All right? Don't rob banks. Okay, so, so there, there, there are consequences. There are results sometimes to our sin. Now, sometimes God helps us with those results and those consequences, and sometimes he done that, that, that's up to him. But I'm not talking about that today. Sometimes there is this thorn. There is this thing that just beats us up all the time. It could be a number of things. In fact, in this room here today, I wonder if there are some things that might be overwhelming some people here today. For example, it might be your finances. In your financial situation, regardless of whatever stimulus they want to throw at you, it just, it just doesn't seem to be enough. And it, it just seems that you're facing all kinds of financial crises and that is just bringing you down. And that is just tormenting you, the emotions that come with that. Maybe for you it's a health issue. And it just seems like every time you pray that God... W- I'm going to connect one of these days and it's not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> so if I knock myself out, it's not revival. I just gave myself a concussion. So, but, but you've got this physical, you've got this physical deal and, and, and this issue, and, you, and you're praying that God would heal you. You're praying that God would just set you free from this, but it just keeps beating you up, and it keeps beating you up. Maybe for you, uh, there, there's a situation in your family, whatever that could look like. Maybe with your marriage, maybe with somebody else in your family, maybe with your kids, and that is just tormenting you because it's so difficult. It's bringing up so much stress, and it's just constantly, constantly beating you up. And you're, all, you're asking yourself, am I praying correctly? What is God even listening? Does he even care? What is going on? And, and you had to wonder. You had to wonder if the greatest missionary of all time thought, what am I not getting right here? See, like Paul, there's times, followers of Jesus, that we're going to be faced with some difficult moments. How many of you are glad you came to church today? Wow. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Have a good... No, no, there's more, so hang with me. But this was Paul's reality. In the midst of doing the Lord's work and being very good at it, by the way, He had this thorn. He had this issue that kept beating him up and beating him up and tormenting him. And it wouldn't stop. And he begged God on three occasions, God, please take this away. There are some Christians that have never gone past this. They've walked away from God. They've stopped coming to church. They, they isolate themselves from the rest of the body of Christ because, because the pain's so great. And the easiest target to take it out on is God. God. because we're pretty sure he won't lash out back at us. He could have stopped this. He could have prevented this. Am I getting too real? Come on. Come on. These are things we face, church. So, how do we deal with this? How do you deal when you're going through a critical time and your prayers aren't answered the way that you want them to be answered. Well, it's found in the next part of this message. We've seen Paul's reality, but I want you to look at God's reply. God's reply. Now, this is interesting because verse 9 as the music begins to play, verse 9, <laughs> and this is where I'll be doing my choreographed dance, so be ready. <laughs> Might want to cover the eyes of the children. 
God's reply. God's reply is found in verse 9. So Paul is uttering these prayers. He said, God, please take this away from me. And God does not say, oh, wow, that's bad. I should, okay, it's gone. Sorry, Paul. You must have slipped through the cracks. He doesn't say, he doesn't say, hmm, I'm, I've got a lesson for y'all to learn here. Uh, how does Paul respond? Verse 9, I love this. Verse 9, it says this, but he said to me, he said to me, all eyes up here. That's not what God said, I just said that. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. So, you're going through this. God, take it away, take it away. Hey, uh, my grace, that's all you need. No, that's not what I need. I need you to take this away. I need this to stop. I need this to heal. I need this situation to resolve itself. I need this provided. I need, I need this to go away. And that's not what God said. God said, Paul, this isn't about something you did wrong. My grace is, is sufficient for you because when you're weak, then my power is truly demonstrated in you. My strength is demonstrated at its best when you're at a point of weakness. And none of us want to hear that. American Christianity says, you pray, it all goes away. Sounds like an infomercial, doesn't it? <laughs> pray and go away. Right now, send your checks for $19.99. And, and it just... Sometimes God just says, you know what? I'm not going to take it away. But the grace that I have for you is really what you need. You ready for this? God would say, my grace for you is what you need more than for this to go away. Now, this is kind of deep water. I, I just want to feel good, okay? Where's the feel good stuff? It's coming. It's coming. But you need to understand that, that God's ways are not our ways. And God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Well, if it were my child, I would oh, stop. Just stop, stop, stop. Quit, quit trying to apply human character, natural characteristics to a supernatural God. If, if, your, if, if, if your justification for God's actions is, well, if I would do it, honey, if you would do it, this world would be a shambles. If I could press the button, if I could answer it, boy, this, God, this is how I do it. So, we usually don't pray, thy will be done. We usually pray, my will be done. Yeah. And sometimes God says, no, I, I've, got, I've got a picture that is so big. I've got a picture, I've got a perspective that is so beyond you. You can't even understand why my grace is better than your comfort. But it is. Should I say that again? God's grace 
is better than our comfort. See, Christianity is, isn't all about just rubbing the lamp and the Jesus genie appears and makes everything better. And American Christianity has been guilty of making the church more of a wishing well than it is a place that we understand who God really is. And quite frankly, sometimes God says, you know what, I know you don't like this. I get it. I know you don't like this. But my grace, this is what you need to deal with this. That's what you need. So what's this grace? See, I, I, I don't want to focus on how God did not answer Paul. I want to focus on how he did answer Paul because this was an answer. This was an answer. May not have been the answer he was looking for, but this was an answer. You see, in the midst of all this, in fact, I will tell you that this is probably the way that God deals with us on a regular basis. If we're being honest, we don't always get what we ask for. Thank God. God, I need this, I need this, and a side of this. And, and, and can you biggie size that? With the Diet Coke. See, we might be so focused on trying to get what we want from God that we might forget that this is actually a legitimate reply from God. My grace is what you need. And my power is actually made perfect when you're in this. Here's the good news for you. You ready for this? Every day, the Lord will supply you with the strength that you need to get through that day. Every day. Every day. I'll illustrate it. I've done this before. I'll illustrate it this way. Should have got my props ready. So this chair, okay? This chair has been built to withstand somebody at least of my girth, okay? Okay? A spelt 180 pounds <laughs> in sixth grade. And so, so, so th this chair was built to withstand my weight. Now, there, there are some types of furniture that I won't sit on. Just because I'm kind of a bigger guy. If you have wicker furniture, okay, that is just a disaster waiting to happen, Okay. <laughs> You are just begging me to go through your chair onto your patio floor with my legs kind of like this. Why? Because, well, that, that, that chair is not built for Pastor Phil. I could grab one of the nursery chairs and bring it up here and try to contort myself enough to be able to sit on that. It wouldn't go well. But this chair... It's been built so that a guy like me can sit comfortably. My desk chair in my office, uh, it's a cool chair. <laughs> Don't ever take my chair. Uh, it's got this you know, back thing going on, so it's just like, oh, yeah. You know? Because yeah? when you get older, you know, your back starts hurting, and it's just it's nice. My doctor even said, you need a better chair. I thought, hallelujah, okay. So the board was kind enough to give me that one. That's cool. And, and it's, it's different chairs built for different situations. I want you to picture this chair as God's grace for you. See, tomorrow, when some of you wake up, you may only need wicker furniture. It's not a real heavy day. It's not a real difficult day. The day is going to be kind of easy. And God knows exactly how much grace you need for that day. Then there's days where that amount of grace just won't do because I need more of it. 
there's days where God will give me the grace that I need to get through maybe Tuesday, where God knows that Tuesday is going to be a more difficult day for me than Monday was. Maybe I'm meeting, maybe I have a lot of meetings like I had this past week. Maybe, maybe I'm meeting somebody kind of difficult. Uh, maybe I've got, uh, you know, salespeople calling me. I love that. Uh, I bet you do too. Um, or, or, or maybe there's a crisis coming up in my life that I don't know about yet. I don't need some kitty chair. I, I, need, I need something that's going to be able to help me to make it. And then there's days where that issue might intensify. That problem might get deeper. It, it may torment me. Am I driving the camera people crazy by doing this? I love you. Uh, but it, it may, it may, we, we good, Marty? Okay, you still love pastor? Okay, good. But, but now, now it's not just a problem. Now it's this. And now your emotions are tied into this. And you need more grace Wednesday than what you needed Tuesday and Monday. Maybe Thursday that situation gets even worse. And you need a little bit more grace. Maybe it gets resolved on Thursday. Friday, maybe you don't need as much. But here's the deal. God knows exactly how much grace you need when you wake up every single day. Every single day. He know, that's, this is grace. This is grace. And, and, and the Lord's word for all of us would be, you're praying for this to go away, and sometimes I'll do that, but sometimes I won't. But whether I take this away or not, here's what you need to know. You're good. You're good. My grace, that's all you need. I'll get you through this. Well, well, pastor, you don't know what I'm facing. No, I don't, but God does. I don't, but God does. And his grace is sufficient. His grace is what I need. Amen. Folks, 2020. What a cruddy year, right? Some of us, we needed, <laughs> we've needed more grace than we ever could have imagined. But God knew. I think God's freaked out by a pandemic. He's God. You think God's worried about all this? No. God knows exactly how much grace I need for that day. And here's the deal, and you need to get this, okay? God's grace for, for pastor tomorrow may be different than God's grace for Jen, who, who's teaching high school tomorrow. Are you coaching tomorrow too? No. Okay. Okay. So, so her grace is going to change when she has to teach and coach so God knows exactly how much grace she needs. God knows how much grace I need tomorrow because he knows what's ahead of me. And so what's different, she might need more, she might need less than me. It's okay because God's grace is sufficient for all of us individually. All of us. Are you hearing me today? Yeah. And then I'm going to close with this, Paul's reaction to all of this. Paul's reaction to all of this is this. I, and I love this. Look what he says in verse 12. I'm sorry, verses 9 and 10. <laughs> Wrong book. Look what he says. Therefore, this is after God says, hey, Paul, not going to take it away, but my grace is all you need. Paul says this, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Look what he says. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight, in, I delight in weakness. 
I delight when people insult me. I delight in hardship. How many of you can say that? I love it when I get bashed online. Oh, hallelujah. No, nobody is praising God for that, right? Not normally. This is a God thing here. I, I, I'll rejoice when there's difficulties. Because this is what, this is what Paul understood. When I'm weak, see, if it's not for God's grace, then I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I'm just on the floor. If, if not for God's grace, I'm, I'm just a crumpled mess on the floor. I, I'm, I'm not like I should be. But because of God's grace, when I'm weak, then... I'm strong. When I'm weak, because of God's grace, I'm not that crumpled mess that's stressing out about my family, my finances, and about my health, about my situation, about my crisis. And we're not downplaying your situation. Trust me, we're not. We're not minimizing it. But let's maximize. Let's maximize not your problem, but let's not your thorn, but let's maximize the grace of God. That's what we're maximizing here. We're not gonna make we're not gonna make this huge blown up picture about the thorn that you're facing. What we're gonna do, we're gonna maximize God's grace. Why? Because because